is always an exciting time for games. It's also one of the most difficult times to release brand new ones as all attention is diverted to things that are years away. One of those titles is Vampire, released by Focus Home Entertainment and developed by Don't Nod, who have been making games since 2008. The French company was formed from XEA and Criterion and other studio members and their story was almost a very short one. The first title they made was a futuristic and stylish Remember Me that itself started life as a PlayStation exclusive. This was later dropped by Sony mid-development and picked up later by Capcom to become the femme fatale action that a small portion of us enjoyed in 2013. A technically and artistically impressive debut built on Unreal Engine with a novel twist on the action and story, the highlight being the replay of time to solve the puzzles. It was great ideas let down by a repetitive combat system and telegraph level design at times meant it was almost the end for the company. But life is strange. No, literally, Life is Strange. That was their next crowdfunded title that turned that all around, ushering in one of the most popular episodic games that sold well enough to pull them from the brink of destruction and into a successful studio. Now they have multiple projects on the go, and the next one we're looking at today books teenage angst for nocturnal needs of a supernatural sort. Still powered by Unreal, this time in the fourth version, they have clearly not lost the talent to deliver impressive visuals and a compelling narrative. But we are looking at the tech and presence presentation today across the PS4, the Pro version, alongside the best it can deliver in the PC release. So grab a seat, a clove or two of garlic and a drink as we get to the heart of Vampire. The first thing it strikes you about the title is the gothic Victorian style. Set in 1918 and on the back of World War One just ending and the pandemic just breaking out of Spanish flu across the UK. Our bearded doctor seems to be hanging around with an older crowd, but things soon pick up when he's brought back to life. Now this gives us a first look at the strong depth of field from the engine as you swagger your way out of the pit. This is effective in delivering a disorientated feel to the scene, but is also of a high resolution, showing the TXAA is incorporated into the post-processing pipeline at the end, or with sympathy on these effects. As a result, it's all very clean and stable on the PS4 and the PC. Now this would be affected much more if you drop it to FXAA or worse, no AA at all. Bloody sacrilege, but something we'll touch on later. Now this effect is used throughout certain points in the game when you're injured or you're targeting enemies, and it works well even if it doesn't use bokeh shape regularly, it is a nice effect. But the style of the game is one of its benefits, capturing the old British architecture well from the looming hospital, dank white chapel and the gloom of the rivers as you drift across. The Victorian period was and is a very prominent time. Inspired by the Gothic revival from Europe, the church steeples and large windows are instantly recognisable and the team have captured this. High specular elements with bokeh shapes can be seen in some of the cutscenes but this is one of the sacrifices on the console versions which we'll touch on at the later in the video. William was not the evil man they claimed, he was just taken by the thirst, he needed his drink. Being a vampire, your options for a daytime view are low and costly. Ah, ah, what so this also aids the team's designs. With a thick fog hanging in the air as light from street lamps is laid with a volume-like glow around them. Now this is not volumetric in nature and from the various sections it is used sparingly with a billboard type option used in many of the areas to emulate the depth of light scattering. You can see this on the left hand side as we walk down this tunnel. It handles all all of this with a variety of textures and an equal variety of details at times. At 1080p, 
Ultra settings, the game edges just over 2 gig of RAM, something that is becoming rarer in modern games. The open areas and streaming keep this level reasonably static as you wander from one district to the next, but under closer inspection, something the game forces as part of its investigation process, you have to analyse bodies and other areas for clues. This can show up the weakness in the texture assets, the normal maps and even the triangle count. Lower quality materials can be quickly noticed and hard to ignore. It highlights one of the reasons the console versions seem to push the settings as high as they can go in most areas. While walking around and fighting, you would not notice a huge change from low to high, but once you have conversations, the boost high all Ultra gives is evident and much needed. Now the same is true of the AA solution, FX, AA and TXAA are included and only turn these off if you absolutely have to get that performance back. They come in a variety of strength up to 6 times and this cleans up nearly all the frequency issues that such a dark and high contrast game like this will always suffer from. The cost is an image that is much softer and can lower the quality of the materials in places, but it is a cost that I feel is worth it for the far more stable image presented. Now the PS4 and the Pro also run the TXA solution, looking to be near the 6 or 4 times with an equally stable but soft image covered later in the console comparison. Now having FXAA is a good thing as it will allow the game to scale across a wider level of GPUs even if the solution is inadequate to handle the sub-pixel issues presented here, you can gain back a few vital milliseconds if so needed. Now staying with the PC for now, the options on the title, they are present if not the widest selection on the format. Resolutions can scale from 720 levels up to a native 4K, in addition a resolution scaling option allows you to set the level below this ceiling and then allow the temporal AA and upscale to come from within the engine. Now if you have a medium to a high level GPU like my overclocked RX 570 here, then the 4K30 is only possible if you lower some of the effects down. Largely, the bandwidth swamping post effects option maxed out pushes you into the low 20s and it's not an enjoyable place to be. The quickest way to get this back to a 33 millisecond target is by dropping the settings down to around low. Basically post processing in shadows should get you around 37 to 40 FPS and then you can cap it, basically Reva Tuner outside of the game itself and then give you a 30 FPS cap at 4K and it does present the game with a much cleaner and sharper image with that temporal AA on top, it looks absolutely glorious. So in addition to this, what other effects do we have in the game? Well, as I say, a lot of them are mixed together, so things like the post-processing effects also incorporates things like the film grain chromatic aberration, so if you set it on ultra, you can't really turn them off independently. So you do get improved image quality and post-processing effects, things like screen space reflections. Now compared to the console, there are a few differences, but by and large, they're pretty close. Overall though, looking at the settings, we've got high, low and medium settings here on the shadows, and if you push them up on the edge of the barrel here with the lighting you can see that the difference and the detail is slightly enhanced in addition to the effect setting given that heat haze which is evident on the consoles as well and it's missing on the low settings on the PC so this points towards the fact that shadows are high and effects seem to be a mixture of high and medium. You can see here on the shadow effect and also the dithering on the edge of the character, it looks far more dithered and the pattern is obvious on the PS4 Pro here than it is on the PC at the same 1080p. If you also look in the background, you can see the depth of field. The bokeh shapes have that dithered sparse rendering solution. So this looks like the temporal AA solution working on the PS4 Pro, maybe using a reconstruction method or it's not as effective on covering these post-process effects. It doesn't look quite as smooth, but the TAA coverage is stronger, so you actually smooth out the textures and you lose some of that micro detail or the high frequency detail, which you can still see here on the PC. The net result though is you end up with a more stipled mosaic effect on his beard, that dithered pattern which you can't see on the PS4 Pro due to the stronger TAA which merges all this and blends it together which is a more effective image at the cost of clarity which you can see on his shirt. So I'm leaning more towards the fact that post effects is a combination of medium and high. Backing this up is the fact that screen space reflections are used abundantly throughout the title and pretty much by and large they're the same on the PS4 and the Pro as they are on the PC but here on this boat ride you can just see additional screen space reflections on the edge of the boat which aren't present on the PS4 version so I'm again saying that this is the reason why it's a mixture of the two.
In addition to this, texture quality can be improved. Now, like I say, at max, it's a two gig card, give or take. So you can still run this. The video here, you can see a comparison of my GTX 750 Ti, which can still run the game at ultra settings, but it doesn't really hold on to that 30 FPS. But we'll get to performance later in the title. Moving on to the other settings in the game, things like material quality. This actually enhances the details on the streets and the cobbled stones. But then moving from low to high, you'll see on the ground here, there's actually parallax occlusion mapping used on the cobbles and the streets. And this gives additional depth to the scene as you stand above it. You can see the cobbles here in the distance. And this is included on the console releases. You can see the parallax occlusion on the floor. Again, the texture filtering isn't quite as good off into the distance. And additionally, the post-processing suite, the AO, is slightly better on the PC, and that gives a darker image. And I also think that the material quality is slightly better on the PC. The POM is of a higher quality. So even though you're going between medium and high, again, it's a combination of the two. Now, there is one big area that is different here, and that is the distance, the drawing distance. It's actually lower than the lowest on PC. Again, it shouldn't be a surprise. And largely, this is down to the CPU issue. This is a cutback. You can see as I walk back and forth and the background pops in and pops out again, this is evident on the PC, but nowhere near to this level. You can see it pops in within a feet of where you are and then things just appear. Some of this may be bugs, but it's certainly a cutback for the CPU. And this is true on both consoles, even though there's an additional 31% CPU performance circa on the PS4 Pro, it doesn't really look to be being used here specifically. There's no improvements on the visual quality, the POM, the textures, everything looks identical right down to the resolution, which is a native 1920 by 1080 on both machines with that same temporal AA. There might be a minor improvement on performance, but not really anything to shout about. And that is a shame. I do hope the team get around to patching the title and and from testing the title here on PC, I would think around 1440p would be possible on the Pro's GPU and probably slightly higher on the Xbox One X. And it would be nice to see that additional clarity and resolution across the entire asset suite in the title. It would make a much cleaner and sharper image overall, certainly on a 4K screen. There are some other nice touches. You get contact shadows certainly inside, but the way these are done likely maps to the object itself like a proxy shadow. You can see under the floor here, sometimes it glitches out and you can actually see the contact shadow even though you can't see the character walking back and forth on the floor but it's a nice touch overall so bringing us back to performance then like i say the target here on both consoles and also my 8350 and my gtx 750 ti with an overclock is 30 fps there is no chance of anything no matter what you do here running at 60 fps even that said it isn't possible to run this title at 60 FPS, even at 1080 on my Ryzen 2700 and my RX 470 570 card, which is also overclocked. Now, there's two problems here. One is capped at 62 FPS, which is a bit of a weird one, but it makes sense if they've rendered the game, or at least they've targeted the game at consoles, and maybe they had that target of 60 FPS originally. You can't go any higher than that, no matter what you do, even with V-Sync off. But even at 1080p and alone, the settings, you'll regularly get stutters and judders throughout the title, and this happens on the Ryzen, which has way more CPU than is really needed here even on single thread you can see the performance here is around 17 percent total cpu usage i feel like a child learning the limits of my body Every fiber of my being is a fire. I feel like a child. 
child learning the limits of my body. Yeah, child or not though, on the Pro, with all the additional GPU usage, it's not the biggest problem. It can hold 30, but very much like Bloodborne and things I've said over the years many times, this suffers from bad frame pacing. It regularly skips into 16 millisecond frame times and then back into 33 and then into 50, which makes the game judder and feel very bad to play at points. It really can feel quite glitchy and stuttery, very similar to how The Witcher 3 felt when it first launched, and again, like I say, Bloodborne and many other titles. So I do hope the team can work a little better to scale the CPU usage across more cores to try and even out what is essentially a CPU issue here. Streaming, loading, and action and animation all seems to impact the CPU, and therefore we get these stutters and judders at times, which we also get during loading sections. Now moving to the PS4, the standard PS4, it doesn't look that much better. There's certainly points where you can see the Pro's extra GPU helps out at points where the PS4 just dips below the 30 FPS target. But by and large, it's a very minor change. Certainly cutscenes can see a level of improvement, but it really isn't a revolutionary leap. It's 16, 50, 33 milliseconds all the time, but some skips into the 83 milliseconds. It's not ideal, and it certainly isn't smooth. But it isn't a terrible game to play, and because it's not a fast action title, you can get away with it. But walking around town or even action, it generally feels very inconsistent because of these issues. Now overall, you can lower the settings on the PC version, the A350, so you can get a slightly more consistent or a higher level and try and cap it. So even though it doesn't perform quite as well on the PC as I would hope, you can make it better than the consoles here if you've got the relevant hardware. I'll move into the higher end PC in a moment. The man has been drained of all blood. Over there! <laughs> So you're capped at 30 on the PS4 and the Pro, and by and large you're capped at that rate on the lower end PC as well. But if you've got a higher PC then you can push it a little further. So here we try to do just that. Now on my Ryzen rig here with the RX 470 or 570 you can see that 60 FPS or 62 at the cap level that the game limits you at. Uh, that's it. That's as best as you can get. But once you get into action and walk around, you still get these judders and stutters to 50, 83 milliseconds, and the frame rate is not consistent. It doesn't hold 60 even at these levels. In fact, you can drop it to 720p, which you can see here, and it still doesn't hold 60. And it's not using all the CPU. The game literally has a problem going above that level. That's where it's capped. That's where it's limited. But the game will still stutter, judder, and have loading issues and all other kinds of issues that I, I can't even second guess at this point. But the long and short of it is the game is not consistent across the board, no matter the platform. But if you want the additional resolution and quality, then you can just bump it up to 1440p and it will still hover around the 4550. But if you go to 4K, as I mentioned earlier, then you have to play with the settings to get anywhere near a 30 FPS target on this machine, as it just has problems overall. There are some nice elements to the title, certainly the character conversation sequences and the story. It's very slow burn, but it does start to draw you in. The combat can get better, even if it's a little bit clunky. The AI is okay, but not great. Its, it's cone of field of view is quite bad and pathfinding is quite bad overall some nice destruction particle effects in the title and character models can be again hit and miss with some good details across the world but remember this isn't a triple a studio this is a very small studio but asset quality lighting the pbr material system and the shading overall is very very good in addition, they must also be commended for making that leap from 3 to 4. That's a fundamental change in their pipeline and development process, and they've still made something as impressive as this, which stands well amongst much bigger and more experienced teams. Yes, even if it is a little rough around the edges. If you are in line for some vampire action, I can highly recommend this title. And if you are in line, I recommend the PC version over and above the console ones based on what we see just now, because that is the best pace to play, even if you've got a mid range to low end machine you'd probably have the options to tweak it and still get a more consistent performing title don't expect 60 fps locked on any machine from this title but 30 at 4k is an option and you can still tweak
tweak and play around with that a little more. I have enjoyed the title, even if I don't find all of it to my, to my liking. It certainly isn't a bad release from Don't Nod, and I hope they go on to much bigger and better things, and they get around to releasing a patch to support the Pro and X more efficiently. Hopefully you didn't think this video sucked, but if you did, give it a thumbs down and a comment below. If you did like it, though, give it a thumbs up, and always share where appropriate. If you want to chat to me even more, you can follow me on Twitter and read more about this and other games on my website. But for now, I'm off into the night like a vampire bat, and I'll catch you guys and girls on the next one.